Hi, now that we talked about bones, we can start talking about where bones meet. In fact, that is the definition of a joint is where two or more bones are going to meet together. Joints allow our bodies to have mobility and it also helps keep our body together. There are three main types of joints. And we're going to talk about the first two just briefly and then the third one in more detail. So fibrous joints are sometimes considered false joints because there's no space in between where the bones meet and that's not completely true because there is space but it's been filled in typically with a connective tissue. So fibrous joints, the best example probably to show you is within the skull. So here we have the parietal lobe or parietal bone and here's the other another parietal bone and the occipital bone on the back here of the skull and you can see these lines that have formed in between these bones where they meet. So these are referred to as sutures, it's a specific type of fibrous joint, but it's where these bones connect together. Now you've probably heard of um, where like a baby has a soft spot because their bones haven't fused together yet. It allows e easier time for the baby and the mother for the baby to be born because those bones can in the skull can move around a bit. And so that area will be filled in with a, that connective tissue and so that fontanelle, which is that soft spot, will, be, um, will become bone in the future and be immobilized. And another type of bone is cartilaginous bones or cartilaginous joints. So I have a few examples over here of where cartilage is in different areas. These are cons considered slightly movable joints because um, so you see here like they're in in between the, the vertebrae in your spine and in your pelvis and in your ribs. So they allow for some movement to take place but not as free movement as our last group which is the synovial uh, joints here. Synovial joints allow for free movement whereas the other two didn't allow for complete movement. Synovial joints will allow for complete movement. Now there are different types of synovial joints that allow different types of movement. So let's just talk about first what makes up a synovial joint. If you look here, here we have two bones that are meeting. Remember that's the definition of a joint. And at either end of the bone we have this articular cartilage. This is going to help protect the ends of the bones. We also have a synovial membrane that is protecting the joint as well. The synovial membrane will produce uh, synovial fluid that will help lubricate this area inside this joint. So this cat it's the joint cavity, uh, the space that's between the two bones that is created by the synovial membrane, the articular cartilage. So then we also have this articular capsule that in encloses the, the joint cavity. Then because we have bone meeting bone here, there's also supportive ligaments that are going to connect one bone to the other to help stabilize that joint. Now tendons, uh, tendons and ligaments get confused all the time. Ligaments will connect bone to bone, tendons will connect bone to muscle. Now let's talk about the different types of synovial joints. The first one I have is a plain um, synovial joint. Now this is also referred to as a gliding joint. In this picture here they have it shown as a gliding joint. This is showing a transitional movement in, let's say, like the wrist or in the metacarpals of your hand. A hinge joint is going to have movement in a one plane. So like your elbow is having, it has a hinge, it's just moving back and forth. Also with your knee. A pivot joint, they, they have um, an example there of your neck turning. It can show, have rotation, but you can also have this in your forearm where you have rotation with your ulna and radius. So that can be another example of a pivot joint. And then you have ball and socket joints which allow the most movement and that's going to be like in your shoulder where you have a lot of different movement and also in your hip. There are different directional terms for synovial joint movement. So we have a couple examples here. Flexion and extension. I think that one kind of you can use common sense on because it's flex. You're flexing a muscle you are decreasing the angle in that where that um, joint is located. Extension is you are increasing that uh, angle. Then we have plant or dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So you can see how here down here uh, at the bottom here with the foot, dorsiflexion is you're decreasing that angle. Plantar flexion, flexion you are increasing that angle. 
abduction and adduction, I know they're very similar in terms, but abduction, you're going away from the body. Adduction, you're going towards the body. So abduction, I think about like, you're going, well, you're going away from the midline. So abduction is like being taken away. So it's going away from the body, the midline of the body. Adduction is like you're adding to, to the body, so you're going closer to it. And then you have circumduction that is basically is moving the limb in a cone shape. So you have this um, point here, and then when you're moving it around, you have a cone shape that is formed. There are a few issues that can arise with joint use and even um, just that happen genetically or spontaneously. The first one I have is bursitis. Bursas are, or bursae are areas where there can be friction between the bone and muscle or um, bone and tendon or muscle and tendon and it's a bursa is a fluid filled area that is really there to reduce friction and sometimes those areas become inflamed. Tendonitis is another inflammation of the tendon and it's usually because of overuse. Then we have arthritis. There are different types of arthritis. Um, some of them just come with old, getting older um, where the ends of the bones are being worn away. But there's also types that are inherited or that could be caused by uh, an infection of the joint area and that could lead to such things as rheumatoid arthritis. Now I'd like to show you just a little bit of a video that I think you'll find slightly interesting. You ready? I've been cracking my knuckles since I can remember. I do it so often that I've been called crunchy. I've gotten so good at it that I can pop almost every joint in my body. But like, why do they do that? Because even though it feels awesome, it does sound rather alarming. Well, a joint is just where two bones in your body come together. They don't actually touch. Did, friction would grind them into a bone powder, which I think most people would find unpleasant. So instead, your bones are capped by cushions of articular cartilage, which are kept lubricated by thick, clear, mucousy stuff called synovial fluid. And that fluid is produced by the synovial membrane, which surrounds the entire joint. When you stretch or bend a joint, those bones pull away from each other, and that causes the synovial membrane to stretch, which increases the amount of space inside it, in turn lowering the pressure. And this is important because your synovial fluid is full of dissolved gases, mostly carbon dioxide and oxygen. And when the pressure of a fluid drops, any gases trapped within it become less soluble. Basically, they undissolve. In this case, they form bubbles. So that pop you hear is actually the sound of a bubble forming inside your synovial fluid. What's really cool is if you take an x-ray of a joint right after cracking it, you can actually see the bubble. It increases the size of the joint cavity by about 15 and it takes about 20 to 30 minutes for that gas to dissolve back into the fluid, which is why you generally can't crack the same joint over and over again. There's weirdly not a lot of data on whether knuckle popping is dangerous, but a doctor named Donald Unger was awarded an Ig Nobel Prize in 2009 for eventually popping a joint in his left hand, not his right, in the course of 60 years. His left hand didn't develop any issues. It's not super hardcore peer-reviewed science, but it's still pretty interesting. So while knuckle popping doesn't appear to cause arthritis, it apparently can lead to weaker grip strength. This might be the result of stretching out your synovial membrane or your tendon. The most dangerous part of cracking your joints is probably the people nearby who are always find the noise enjoyable. Hi, Ben. 